Christmas. Join us next week, April 14th, our topic, No More Confusion, The Pursuit of Restoring Mental Balance. Ladies, please save the dates between Friday and Sunday, May 21st through the 24th for Free to Soar 2015 11th Annual Women's Conference at New Faith Baptist Church International. Join us for an exciting four days of praise and spiritual growth. For more information of the location and registration fees, please go to www.newfaith.org. Check out Everyone Has a Story, TV talk show, season seven, on Can TV this spring. The show's main purpose is to educate and inform people within the community. The host, Marcus Jones, believes everyone has a story, so you don't want to miss all of the exciting stories that's lined up to bring healing and love back to the community. Also, check out Marcus Jones' website, www.marcusjonesstory.com, where you can see Marcus' story, trailers from past shows, pictures, and to schedule speaking engagements. The Let's Stay Together talk show will be the guest host again on Everyone Has a Story on Sunday, April 19th. Our topic, Senior Abuse and Domestic Violence. We are also the guest of Report to the People on the PCC Network Forum with host Jerry Patterson this Friday, April 10th. Looking for a great cause? Help New Faith Baptist Church International fight against Ebola. Go to Amazon to support the Joseph Assignment. Go to www.smile.amazon.com. Right after our show, you can tune in to hear more great preaching at New Faith Baptist International Church with Pastor Chanel Felder. This broadcast comes on every Tuesday at 9 p.m. at WYJS. Please check out our Can TV promo commercial on our website at www.letstaytogethertalkshow.com and like the Let's Stay Together show on Facebook. This concludes the Let's Stay Together talk show announcements. Now here is the Let's Stay Together show with Reverend Ricardo McCain and author Brenda McCain, helping you to rebuild your relationships with God. Can't hear myself. Okay, there we go. Hey, we're back. Uh, so, uh, Resurrection, you're still there? I am. Hey, I'm not going to keep you on long. I'm just going to ask you one more question. Thank you. Uh, you know we want you to come back as a guest. And if you're coming to Chicago, we do uh, some TV as well. So we'd like to have you on the show for that too, okay? Absolutely. So Absolutely. The, the last question I'm going to say to you is that uh, I want you to leave uh, a, a message a biblical message for those who are struggling right now in homelessness. Give them a biblical message that can help them resurrect their lives as well. Oh, that's good. (laughs) I would just say to anyone who is listening that is in the thick of homelessness that really feels like life is hopeless, you're not sure exactly how you can overcome it, that there's something powerful about digging your heels in, being clear about your character so that you do not do anything you cannot come back from, and really just reaching in for a deeper intimacy with God. It sounds like it would not be something that 
would be resourceful in this moment. I need to eat. I need to find somewhere to sleep. But oftentimes I found that in those moments when I just did not find my own answers, it was the the answer from God, the person that, you know, God told me to call at that moment. And they knew I was going to call and said, come on and come stay at my house. Hearing from God is such a powerful opportunity for someone who might be going through homelessness because there are divine appointments that are set up. So I really just, and I pray for whoever is listening that needed to hear that, that they would be obedient and they would pick up the phone and call whoever it is that God is stirring in them to call so that they can have somewhere to sleep, so that they can be one step closer to overcoming what they're going through. Amen. It really is a literal faith walk. Amen. Hey, thank you very much for calling into the Let's Stay Together show. We're going to be contacting you soon so you can be back on the show, okay? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. That was Resurrection Graves here on the Let's Stay Together show. Hey, for those of you all are listening to the show, I uh, just got word from NBC that Chewy Garcia has conceded uh, and Rom has won the election. So for those of you who are concerned about that, it's the NBC is saying that Chewy Garcia has conceded the election to uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Baby, we've got a relationship letter uh, that we need to talk about. So um, talk to me about that, girlfriend. Okay. Queen, my queen. Yo, queen. <laughs> <laughs> This um, letter is interesting, and it, is, it says, Dear LST, your topic this week has stirred up so many emotions within my soul. I myself is not homeless, and I don't know anyone per se that is homeless, but for some reason the statement, Am I my brother's keeper, keeps on plaguing my mind. For years, when I see a homeless person, I normally give whatever change I have to them, but I don't know if I'm doing it for the right reasons. Am I doing it because that is what is expected of me, or am I doing it because it makes me feel superior? See, I'm not a very religious person. I don't pray a lot, and I don't attend church every Sunday, but as late, I feel as though I should be doing so much more The homeless are people, too. I don't even speak to them, and I find myself not even asking them what I can do to help them. I just assume my leftover change will suffice. Yes, I know this is wrong, so please advise me on how I could do more sincerely ashamed. First Lady. You already know the answer. (laughs) You already know the answer that you should do more and you can do more. You know, too much is given, much is required. And God gives to us, and he doesn't say, well, I'm not going to give it to you because I know you're going to go buy that purse, or you're going to go get your hair done, or you're going to go. He gives it to us in spite of what we're going to do with it. We're not faithful with our 10%. She just, the, the um, ashamed just said that they're not a religious person, so that, that means that they're not giving to a local church or organization that is committed to transforming the lives of people. And so you already know the answer. So you are your brother's keeper. So let's launch out to the deep. Let's do something different in 2015. And let's, let's seek to transform some lives. You don't have to bring them home. You don't have to let them live in your house. You don't have to. But you can provide resources, volunteer at organizations, donate to organizations. That's one of the steps of, call, uh, of bringing resolution to homelessness. Amen. Yeah. Joining organizations, Join organizations and donating yes. to them. And I still say we're reading that from a shame. Show you did state, I believe, that they are humans. Show some respect. It seems as though people do not show respect for the homeless. They just look at them and discard them. Like okay, and then I actually seen people throw money at a homeless person, and they know because they need it so much, they're gonna you know crawl on the ground to get it. But would you want someone to do that to you? And I think the biggest takeaway I did receive from that letter was. Just do it unto others as you have them do unto you. If you want to help someone, like First Lady said, do it. You, you, you have the means to do it. 
just do it. Help them. Don't don't look down on them. Don't judge them. Or just say hello to them. Ask them. Like we were saying earlier, that as a woman, we know it's a lot of issues we go through. Right. And to see a woman that's homeless, it just breaks your heart. But whether it's a male or a female, and if a woman's out there with her children, if you have that extra money, and we know we do go out and shop and do whatever, give it to them. And I'm not saying you got to give it just to get blessed from it, but... Your heart seems like it's in the right place, even if you're not a real religious person. That's right. Reverend Reverend, uh, Vine? Well, uh, in Proverbs uh, 21, 13, it says, whoever closes his ear to the cry of the poor will himself call out and not be answered. My goodness. So, and you just can't necessarily take a, a literal cry as a literal cry. You know, you can look at a person and and hear them crying without them murmuring a word or any noise coming out of their mouths. You know, so you have to be, you know, empathetic. You have to be able to put yourself and and try and put yourself in the shoes of other people when they don't have. And when you respond appropriately, when you respond the way that God commands us to respond, or whatever, you, if your heart is challenging you to do something, obey your heart. Do what your heart is telling you to do. And and when you do that, you'll continually be blessed. That's right. Remember, um, homelessness is a human condition. We yeah. created this. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I would say about that is that, uh, one, uh, she did say she's not a very religious person. I got a church you can go to called New Faith Baptist <laughs> Church in Tenacity where you can start becoming a religious person because that's the first thing, that you need to find Christ. Because once you find Christ— then you'll know the right things to do. It'll be a part of your life. That spirit will be a part of you. And so you won't feel superior over someone. You, you'll, you'll be humble. And you know, that's what Christians are supposed to be. You're supposed to have that humbleness, that love. And, you know, and I'm, I'm going to switch it around a little bit, you know, um, and it says, you know, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I'm going to use it in this vein. There are weapons that form against us that are us. That sometimes we are our worst enemy. We place people in poverty. The enemy of the enemy. Right, the enemy of the enemy. You know, we, 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 we cause certain situations. And so when we think about should we give something to someone, then, you know, our spirit, you know, that knows Christ, even though that sometimes we battle, you know, with that, our spirit you knows because it's just a situation, you know, uh, this Saturday. I saw a lady there, and the first thing that came to my mind is I don't have any money, which I usually don't. I usually carry the cash, but then God reminded me, you got some money in that tray. (laughs) And so, well, you know, it's like at that point, because if if I'm a Christian, then that spirit will usher itself and speaks to me and say, you have the money to give to this person because I don't, I haven't carried money with me from over 30 years because I usually spend it. And debit cards. You know, and stuff like that. And that's a funny story there too. But when God (laughs) said that to me, that I had the money to provide, that's because I have a relationship with him. And so I would say to that person, develop a relationship with God. And then that will help you to understand when to give, when to do things, because now you are allowing God to lead you and to guide you and to do what is right and what you, you know, what you should do. And so I would say to a shame, stop being a shame. First know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and then you won't have that feeling of being a shame. It's not your money anyway. It's God's money. Right. And so when you give in to God, he will bless you for being a giver. And when we understand of giving a being a giver, that God will bless us, you know, a good, good portion. He'll give us so many things that I, that we won't have enough room to receive. And so we have to understand that by giving and a good, wholesome desire of knowing Christ Jesus and having him as the Lord and Savior of our life, then we, in turn, will give when God has moved us to give. Mm-hmm. I, you said something uh, earlier. I was uh, going to uh, the church that she goes to, First Emmanuel, and we're we're going down the street. And so the guy calls, you know, we're on Roosevelt Road, and I'm getting off the expressway, and he says to me, uh, man, you got any money? I said, no, nah, I don't carry any cash with me. I just have my uh, debit card. He says, I know how to use that. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm looking at him. And it was so funny to me when he said that. I'm like, I, I bet you do know how to use it. And it was kind of funny to me that he would say that. But when you have something to give to somebody, a shame, and you know it's Jesus, you'll never be ashamed to give in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, let's go back to some of the questions that we have because we got a couple of more minutes here uh, at, before we go on. What you got, baby? Um, okay, I have. Do you feel that the government is doing enough to assist the homeless? 
Well, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. You know, it's it's complicated because we have systems in place. Reverend Vines and I were talking about this as we were we were praying and preparing for our time together this evening. And, you know, they have overhead. 